Greetings, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Sunday Learnings with me, Ben Ibrahim. Thank you so much for being so supportive. I hate to sound like a broken record, but as usual, please click the follow, subscribe, and the likes buttons so you can help me grow this page. Our topic today is taking the tough shots with Australian Opals, Beck Allen. For those of you who are unaware, Beck plays for the Australian Opals, played for New York Liberty, and recently moved to Spain to join the mighty Valencia, or Valencia as they would say, and she was born and bred in country Victoria and lives in Melbourne, but she's calling Spain her home today and probably in the good near future. Beck, how are you? How's it going over there? Por favor, español. <laughs> oh, wow. You just impressed me with that Spanish at the end. Um, no, it's really great. I'm doing um, really well here in Valencia. New city, new team. So I've been here for a month now. So it's taken me a little bit to adjust, but um, we're doing really well. We're undefeated at this point. Well, let's uh, rock and roll back or pick and roll, as they say. Now, you grew up in country Victoria. How did this love for basketball start? I was in Wangaratta and Aubrey until maybe I was four or five, and then I came to Melbourne. So I'm a I'm a hundred percent a city girl. Like okay. I would claim I'll claim the country roots and the country heritage, but I I actually started with um, netball. That was my first sport. Um, I loved that game. I still love that game, but I played basketball because my best friend at the time she was playing, and I wanted to do it with her. And um, I fell in love with the game because you could shoot, you could defend, you could run everywhere. So um, yeah, that's how I really started. Now tell us about the pathway from transitioning to okay, you were a netball player, then you were a school netball player slash basketball player at Kerry Grammar School. Go Kerry. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, and then you, you played in club, ba club basketball in Dandenong, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah. tell us about, you know, those the little stories of that and then how the transition to high performance elite basketball. I, I followed the pathway that's really set out um, for athletes. So I was at Hawthorne Magic as my first rep basketball team. And I moved across to Nanawad Inspectors. That's my junior club. I have all the love for them. And... To be honest, that's an organization that has shown me support still now. They're always, you know, uh, posting about me and all my successes. And I just, they, they hold a dear spot for me. Um, through that, that's how I played for state teams. I represented Vic Metro. Um, we were always the ones that everyone wanted to beat. And we won everything. So it was fantastic. I remember I am still such close friends with all those girls that I played with in Vic Metro, which is a special thing in itself. But then from that, that's how I got noticed to play at the AIS. I was there for the Institute of Sport for only just over a year. I wasn't there as long as others. Um, and then from that, I played for junior Australian teams and then eventually the Opals. And from that, I guess that's how I got noticed in the WNBA. And that's how I got my first contract is because of a tour that I did with the Australian team in America. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. So yeah. from the big V to the big NYL, New York Liberty. Tell us about that, the highs and the lows. It's been an unreal experience because this would have been my sixth year this year if I had have gone over, but I chose to opt out because of COVID. Um, at that point, I just didn't think it was safe to go over there. Um, and I still don't regret that decision. You know, I made the right decision for me in that moment. But New York for me, because I've been there for basically that long, there's been a transition of different coaches the whole time and ownership. So we started off being linked with um, the New York Knicks and now we're linked with the Brooklyn Nets. So it's sort of been cool to see how that's changed. I mean, you know, playing at Madison Square Garden and then hopefully this next season we'll be at the Barclay Centre. Um, also just the lifestyle. I love it. Like I love living in Brooklyn. I love being in those big cities where there's so many restaurants, cafes and there's this just beautiful lifestyle and energy to it. So um, New York has just been something that I guess I didn't dream of it when I was a kid playing. But I'm someone that where every time I take that next step, I want it and then I'll try and get it. <laughs> so that's really how it's, it's gone for me. It's a huge grind being in it because especially because there's so many games. Like sometimes you'll have four games in a week. You know, you're on the road for 10, 12 days, you know, going to the West Coast. Um, and it's hard. It's really, really very difficult. But when I got there, I got the biggest reality check of my life. I, you know, I was playing in the WNBL and I thought I was a great defender. Then I got to America and I realized, wow, I've got a whole lot of work to do. Um, and it's not so much your coaches that are holding you accountable, it's your teammates. So that was another big reality check for me, having your teammates like going after you every single practice, making you better. 
And I think that that was just a big thing for me to learn. Hey, don't have such a thin skin. Don't take offense to any of this. And it really helped me grow up. I, I think it's had a huge impact on the person and player that I am today. Um, but I've just found every year I've gotten better and better. I mean, last year, I, I think I've, I'm holding the record in New York Liberty for the most points scored in a quarter. Um, and that's pretty good. Just an Australian, you know, playing, playing in the league. Um, but it's also just that you've gained confidence throughout it and then the respect of other teams, players, coaches and all of that. In terms of the standard, which is very good in the WNBL versus the WNBA, tell us about the standards difference and how those standards, I mean, what really made you better and better all the time? The game is just completely different, I feel, in the WNBA compared to the WNBL compared to Europe. I think that everywhere you go, you've got a different style. But I got to America and it's just so much more physical. Um, the athleticism is, is at a whole other level. The foot speed of players. So that's why I think I had that reality check defensively because I need to be able to lock down those types of players, you know. Um, but then it's also just there was this huge steep learning curve where there's points where you felt like you weren't making progress because I mean things don't happen like that but I'm going to say over a span of two years because I really chose to focus on what they were telling me um I, I've, I've become more than just a shooter I'm, I'm not just a catch and catch and shoot player like I'm able to come off the dribble I, I've learned how to use the on-ball screen a whole lot better I love to go left I, <laughs> I love going left and What's so funny is like, I didn't, I didn't realize that until it was Sandy Brondello that really pointed that out to me being like, Beck loves going left. I was like, do I? Um, yes, she's right. Um, but then I just think that being able to play with that toughness of you get hit, but you're able to still finish, you know, there's all of those sides to it because you don't necessarily get the calls. You had a major <laughs> injury in oh, yeah. your Liberty. I mean, tell us about that injury. Tell us how it affected you. And tell us that how it made you a better human being, a better basketball player. Because it changed your basketball career a bit. I had a knee injury. Um, it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't great. It was terrible timing, all of that. But I've had, my whole career, I've had injuries, to be honest. So um, when I got that, I'll be, I was devastated. I was devastated when I got it because it was my first season in the W. I had played, what, two or three games. So I felt like I hadn't really shown anything at that point to the league um but my gosh new york looked after me they looked after me and they said you know we're we're keeping your like you know holding your rights we want to like you know they looked after me throughout the whole surgery and, and checked in with me and i still felt quite a bit part of the group which was great um did it derail me i'm gonna say no obviously um because i'm here at this point but I, as I said, like before that couple of years prior, I've had two shoulder reconstructions. Like I, I've learned how to come back from injuries and I've made sure that it hasn't been a time where I'm getting depressed. Um, I found like my first injury I really struggled with. And the next ones I've learned how to enjoy my time away from the game. And I've always said that to people whenever they've had big injuries is don't stress the fact that you're not on the court and you're seeing everyone getting better around you and then you're staying here. I, I just really believe you've got to enjoy your time away from the game when it's forced upon you, just like COVID. And on that note, that leads to my next question very nicely. The Beck Allen mentality, the Beck Allen winning mentality, the Beck mm -hmm. Allen bounce back mentality after a win or a loss, the Beck Allen bounce back mentality after a major injury or after a life crisis or after a happy life moment. Tell us about it. Yeah, uh, I'm going to be honest. It's a work in progress. It's something that I'm working on now and I'm going to be working on for the rest of my career because I think that's the strength that I'm needing to develop is just keeping a, a mentality that stays like this rather than going up and down. I'm an emotional person. Like I feel the highs, I feel the lows. And it's just like, how do you keep it the same? But I, I really do feel like, I don't know, COVID has it's created a perspective for me um, in some ways because it's like I, I realized, hey, I love this game, you know, because there's a point where um, I, you, it becomes a job. There's a point where you feel like I'm here and it's just working and it's a grind. And there's probably more bad moments than good, but you've just got to make sure that the good is outweighing the bad. I really feel that um, because there is a lot of, even in games, in one single game, there's that many errors that happen in it. 
but that's hopefully not what you're focusing on. Um, but like the mentality, like I love to win. I'm very competitive, uh, whether it's just a fun shooting drill or if it's an actual game. Typical Aussie. Um, but <laughs> yeah, I actually think that what my focus has become is enjoy the successes of your teammates. I feel that when you're hyping up your teammates, you can only ride that wave with them, you know? So if someone's doing well, like tell them, be up in their face and be like, this is great, you know? Because then I think that that just helps you improve and be better. What's your plans for life after basketball, a career for life after basketball? What does it look like? I don't have a very clear image, but I don't see that as being a bad thing just yet. Like I only just completed my degree in December. So that's done, ticked that box, you know? Um, now it's about getting, thank you, <laughs> please give me that applause. Um, now it's getting the work experience because I think that the only way I'm gonna get a really clear vision of what I want is by trying different areas of that marketing degree that might suit me. And I'm wanting to see if I can tie in sport and it doesn't necessarily have to be basketball, but I do love the idea of tying in women's sport, maybe branding of athletes, um, there's just so many things that, yeah, I feel like there's a lot of opportunities that can come from having that degree as well as my career as a professional and just putting them together. Um, so hopefully in the next 10 years, I've definitely figured it out. I'm doing it. I'm living it. I'm breathing it. But in the next five years, I want to be playing. For our audience, I first met Beck when Beck played for Australia when she came to Malaysia last year to play against Japan and India for the Olympic qualifiers. We were very nice to walk me through how to pronounce the girls' names. I don't think many players do that, and I thank you for that. And that was the start of a beautiful <laughs> friendship. But, I mean, I see the friendliness, the friendly side of you then. I see the friendly side of you now. But like you said, you are as competitive as anything. And you seem to me, correct me if I'm wrong, that you're never really satisfied. But <laughs> what, has been, what has been the highlight of your career thus far? Because you've achieved some great milestones. My absolute highlight is going to always be when we beat Spain at the World Championships in Tenerife. Um, that moment was, I felt like we'd won gold in that moment because you're playing on their home court. It was incredible game. It was so close. It was so competitive, but it's also just the emotions that come along with it. Um, I know that it came up actually in my Facebook feed where like two years ago on this day. And it's just like, you get this like, flux of emotions where you're like oh you remember it so vividly and you just remember you just want to share it with all your teammates and then it just creates this bond that you have with all of my opals girls like that we're going to share for for years to come but that's 100 my um my 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 biggest highlight but like you said even like i like to think that i'm an easygoing very positive person you are, you are. and i love that you said i was friendly that's lovely too <laughs> Um, but when I cross that line, I don't know what happens. It's almost like this totally different personality. But, I mean, I think it works in my favour. 2018 World Championship, like you said, you've shared that bond with many, many of your Opals girls. And I'm going to, one thing I like to do just to wrap up an interview in a very comical way. No right or wrong answer. Yes, loosen it up. Just like yeah. the IG videos at the Valencia Beach. I'm just going to say some names <laughs> to you. And you just tell me one or a couple of word answers that best describe them, okay? Okay, okay. All right, are you ready? Kayla George. <laughs> Hilarious, just so much positive energy. She's the team joker, isn't she? She absolutely is. And it's just great having a personality like that on the team because she just keeps everyone just up, you know? Yeah. Liz Cambridge. She's authentically herself in every way. And I really do love how she uses her voice on many occasions. And especially with the time that the world is right now, I'm, I don't know, I, I've been so impressed by her. Izzy. Firstly, WNBA champion, debut season. Um, and she's so quiet and beautiful. Just such a, a beautiful heart. Coach Sandy. She's encouraging. She inspires confidence. Um, she builds a group that they're going to be successful together. Um, yeah, I, I can't speak more highly of her. The one and only Captain Courageous, Jenna O'Hay. I've got to say wisdom, absolute wisdom. And she's actually the one that creates a calmness. Like, she's a calming force. Stephanie Talbot. Athletic. Athletic. Just super, super athletic. Um, I swear she can dunk it if she tried. 
Tess Magic. Melbourne Boomer, that's how we played together. Um, I love that like, she's captain, point guard, great energy, a bit of a ball of swag. I'm gonna say a bit of swag, yeah. Uh, the one and only, Mariana Tollo. The sweetest presence, like she's a captain, leader of the team. Um, she's she inspires togetherness like she keeps everyone together and she's almost like that mother of the team now i want you to narrate us a story okay and narrate us a story about your basketball dream what does it look like what's the ambiance? what are the commentators saying where's the drama where's the emotion and how does it finish we're at the tokyo olympics we're going for gold but at this point is there going to be a crowd or is there not? <laughs> Are we in a bubble? How is the Olympics going to be? This is probably the worst story you've ever heard. But <laughs> you know what? I'm picturing it just like the NBA um, playoffs that they had. So you've got people up on the screens now because it's COVID days. You've got them up on the screens cheering us on. We're going up. It's coming down to the final seconds. We're playing USA, obviously. And then the ball comes out to me for the three. Switch. We won. <laughs> bang, bang, bang. Look back. Thank you so much for your time. I hope your dream does become a reality. And I hope uh, you look after yourself over there. Uh, don't ever be a stranger. If you have good stories to tell, give me a call or a WhatsApp. I'll help happily, okay. we'll happily put you back on Sunday learning to tell great stories. But you be safe and shoot well and play hard. Thank you so much. Thank you.